Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm a marine biologist and an artist, and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my passion of the oceans with you through art. You click the blue thumbnail, which means you're here for How to Art, the segment where I show you how I do my art. I post a new video every Saturday and Tuesday. Today we'll be discovering how I painted the Threadfin Butterfly Fish. Brush is ready. Let's dive in. In this painting, I decided to change up my background. I add some water to add some interest. Because there was a big fish in the background, and just lots of coral, and my fish got lost. I map out where I want my water to go. Luckily, I paint water for a living, so I know how to do it. I start on my blues and loosely block in my shapes. This is the first layer, and it can be loose. I wanted to have two light spots like rolling waves. I also got a new bottle of paint I wanted to try out. It is bright aqua green from Liquitex. I'm not sponsored, but I really like their paints. I then block in my coral. I find a nice yellow brown and magenta to start in my midtones. I am very loose with this as well. I don't need to copy my reference photo exactly. Once I have my shapes down, I can push it push in some shadows. I start by adding darker brown to the coral and purple to the magenta. I finish with black, mixing in a little bit of dark blue with my black so that it does not look flat. Another way to increase the depth of flat black is at the end. You spray a gloss varnish over everything on your black and your blacks will become deeper. Once this layer is dry, I changed my brush. I have a chiseled round brush with a flat face. This gets a lot of the tiny details that I need for the coral. You can buy a brush like this, or you can make one. If you have an old round brush or a cheap round brush that you want to extend the life of, use that. Just cut the bristles at an angle for the flat round chiseled effect. This will add texture, but also blur the paint. Just make sure to be light on the paint. If you use paint that is too thick, you won't have the same effects as thin paint. I add highlights and pull in some aqua green into the shadows of the coral. This ties the water into the coral. Now I prepare for my main subject. I go over parts of the fish in white as a primer. I got a little messy with my coral and need to clean it up. Since I am using white, I figured I should also block out my waves and the ripples on the water surface. I make sure that most of my lines are horizontal. I want the water to fade into the background. I work from long strokes to short tiny dots as I go down the canvas. This gives the illusion of depth. I am also not picky how I make the patterns. Water is abstract and there is no simple way to create waves. I make sure to add some darker blues down the canvas and in some of the ripples as shadows. Now that everything looks how I want it, I can finally work on my fish. Even though the sides of the fish are white, I don't want it to leave them just plain white. I rarely leave plain white on my canvas unless it's the brightest highlights. Even then, I add pearlescent paint or glitter to make it even brighter. Why use paint when you can paint with light? As I paint, I place the structure of the fish. I use mixes of whites and blues carefully on the surface of the fish. Then I work in my yellows. Try not to mix the yellow and blue in the area where you need bright colors, otherwise it makes green. I am moving onto the stripes and shading of the fish. I use black at first, but black and yellow don't really mix very well. It makes a muddy yellow color. I have some troubles fixing this in the future. I add a dark blue to the black when I go over the blue sides. I add bright orange to the yellow portions of the fish's fins to add shadows. Don't worry if your colors aren't exact, the thing that really matters is your value and your contrast. I'm going over some of the black and yellow portions with orange. I'm trying to fix that muddy look that I created earlier. I let that layer dry and glaze on some blue to push the shadows of the fish. I also wanted to lighten up the stripes. I noticed they were too dark compared to my reference photo. Many beginning artists make the mistake of taking too much time 
to not look at their reference photo. They are spending more time looking at their painting than their reference photo. I add several layers of yellow to soften out the bright orange. The yellow paint that I use is thin and acts as a glaze without using glazing medium. Once I have the darks on the blue how I want them, I glaze a layer of light blue and white as the highlights. I noticed that you can see scales and textures on the stripes of the fish, so then I add them now. I go over some of the blacks in the background to clean up my edges, then decide to work on the eye. In my reference photo, the fish eye is very dark and you can't see it. I add places where I can add detail to give the fish more character by lightening up the eyes. I work in my dark blue again to add detail on the stripes of the fish. I wanted it to shift from black to blue. Black seemed a bit too harsh for this painting, and, I, and so I let everything dry, then glaze light blue over everything that is blue or white. The great thing about glazing is that you can still see all the layers underneath, and it creates a great depth when you see the paintings in person. Very little detail is lost in this process. As I progress, I work in finer and finer detail. I like using my liner brush for small details. Here's a tip for you. I want to lay down bright highlights on my fish. How would I do that? So I want to create an effect that there, the fins are glowing, that light is passing through it, but right now the yellows are as, basically as bright as I can get them. I lay down layers of white, then use yellows once it is dry. This will create really bright highlights that make it look like it's glowing. My camera decided not to record my painting of the eye, but I pulled in some blues from the surface water and white. The blues need to be reflective. The brightest part of the eye is the bottom. The light comes through the eye and shines from the top to the bottom. Then when I'm happy, I add my final highlights to the top of the fish and to the fins and shadow reflections. It ties everything into the picture. Colors from the background reflect onto the fish, making it all tied together. I will call this painting finished. Thanks for watching, and I would also like to thank you for being an active member of this community by leaving likes, comments, shares, and subscribing. Every little bit helps. I have merchandise on my website, ntspring.com. I'll have more in the future. Links are down in the description. Happy creating, and God bless.